A number of factors go into our winter weather outlook. One of the main influences globally on our weather is El Nino. That is when the warm waters move to the eastern Pacific. Now, this year's El Nino is very, very weak, similar to what we saw in October of 2014. So we have a weak El Nino developing this year, and that's going to play a pretty big part in our winter weather outlook because now the influence on our weather will depend on other factors globally, namely the North Atlantic Oscillation. That's an area of high pressure over the northern Atlantic that when it shifts northward toward Greenland is in a negative phase, which means cooler temperatures, more of an active storm track for us. When this area of high pressure pushes a little bit further to the south, it's a positive phase, which means warmer temperatures and a more northern storm track. So here's what we can expect for November and December. Similar El Nino to 2014, which means we should see a wide range of temperatures over the next couple of months. We could see some wild weather swings, so be weather ready as we could be in store for some big storms at times. So that's what we can expect for November and December. What's up with January and February? We're going to go now to Andy Parker. Thank you very much, Aaron. And as we get into the throes of winter, January and February, it's only about eight and a half weeks long, but get ready. The cold is going to come charging in. That's not crazy. It happens every year. This time around, it's going to be more days below 32 than above. That did not happen last year. There are a few years that we spent some time there. There was a February people might remember where we never made it above 32. I don't think it's going to be that much, but this is definitely going to be below normal. Now part two to this is that active storm track that Aaron mentioned. It dives down over the upper Midwest, cuts through the Great Lakes and spins up into these nor'easters. And while Buffalo may not take a direct hit on these, there's going to be enough of them that if that lake does not freeze early, we're going to see meandering storm uh, meandering bands right on through the uh, right through the middle of winter. Now let's talk totals. Here are some numbers. 37, 55, 76, 112, and 130. Let me jog your memory in the last seven years. Remember 2011, 2012, barely had a winter. 55 was a breeze in 2015, 2016, still below average in 2016 to 17. In more recent memory, 112 and 130. So the big question you want to know is where are we going to be? Well, that arrow is going right past the 70s. We are likely going to triple digits yet again with this active storm track. And folks, don't kid yourselves. It feels like winter outside and it's almost already begun as we've had more opportunities for snow in the last week than we did last year through the entire month of October. Not everybody's going to see triple digits, though. To the north, if you live up in Keith Radford territory, you know yourself up in Lewiston, Niagara on the lake, you barely hit the half century mark. You move in the middle sections of uh, Niagara, Orleans County, it's 75. The 100 mark happens out near Batavia and then bisects Buffalo, South Buffalo, less North Buffalo, or I should say more and less if you're in Amherst. Then we start to get to the the big ones here, Blaisdell, Hamburg, Orchard Park, and then up into the hills. Look at how it drops off from Wales and Marilla all the way down back to 50 by the time you hit Letchworth. And of course, the bell ringers, Gowanda, Perrysburg, Cherry Creek, 150 annually. And as we look down into the southern tier down to Jamestown, you folks only get about 75 annually. As we go a little further inland, this is how it plays out from Rushford all the way to Wellsville as you sit at around 50. So again, I don't think that this landscape changes where the, um, the highest amounts fall, but I do think we're going to see about 100, if not more, in Buffalo. Now